welcome back to Life and Sport Podcast, and we're joined by a pretty awesome guest. Um, first time a sponsor slash partner slash whatever you want to call them. Uh, let's go with product ambassador partner um, for the podcast Energy Pro has come on like the first time a you know a product partner has come on the podcast. Uh, Trent Boland is his name. He's not only um, one of the figureheads of Energy Pro, he's also a former full time sports person, sports athlete. And, you know, first of all, welcome to the podcast. Welcome to the show. And no pun okay. intended, let's talk about Energy Pro. <laughs> uh, thanks for having me. <laughs> no, no dramas. Um, so before we get stuck into your sporting journey, as, as we do with life and sport, obviously I'd be remiss if I didn't ask about um, Energy Pro. So first of all, to anyone who's listening, what is Energy Pro? Mate, Energy Pro essentially is uh, protein water. I myself... Uh need at this time of the day a bit of a caffeine hit <laughs> so we have yep. uh two i guess caffeine uh boosted uh products amongst mm-hmm. the portfolio uh then we have two protein loaded products um okay. so yeah double shot of coffee essentially equivalent uh hydration on the go um you know it's a it's convenient way you know to throughout the day there's no added sugar in there um, it's all has to approve, so you know athletes can drink it as well. So pretty much a, a drink for everyone to enjoy. Yeah, fair. The way I like the way I've described it to people who you know who I've told them about it and they don't know what it is. The way I've described it to them is it's kind of like imagine if these three type of drinks that I'm about to mention sort of converged all into one. It, it it's kind of like if Powerade Zero, in particular, because no sugars, etc., met a protein whey powder met a monster can all in one but with none of the bad chemicals and none of the bad this that the other and all of the benefits sort of thing 100 percent, 100 percent. no artificial colors flavors yeah and you get uh nine of the of the uh, amino acids isn't it in that yeah, yeah essential amino acids yeah yeah so they're they're super important when it comes to you know recovery and and muscle development um yeah and just all around health really um, Absolutely. And so my next question about you is obviously you're one of the co-owners of Energy Pro. So what was the inspiration behind the product and starting it up? Yeah. So the inspiration, uh, I can't claim too much fame from my uh, business partner here. So I'll have to give him a little little shout out. Um, it was actually his idea to begin with. Um, I sort of have been there right from the get-go, um, supported that idea, uh, knew there was an opportunity there. Um, we just really... I think everyone needed something to help them that's less bloating. Um, I think with milk products, people can get quite bloated. Um, Absolutely, which, yeah. Yeah, it kind of makes it, um, I guess, easier to drink and less after effects for those who are like lactose intolerant, et cetera. But also like just a non-gimmick product. Um, you know, I feel like there's a few, I guess, gimmicky type products on the market. Um, yeah, like I've definitely seen Body Science's version of this on the shelves at Coles. Not saying that that's a gimmick because it's very similar, but yeah. Energy Pro is definitely better in my opinion. And that's that. That was before you guys came on board as a, as a partner. As I've as I've we've spoken in the past that I was drinking your product before I even reached out to you guys. Oh, amazing! And look, really appreciate that feedback. And um, yeah, look, each to their own, and um, everything has their own um, you know, benefits. Um, yeah, of course. Someone may prefer body sciences. I don't know why, but some might. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, look, uh, we are looking for ambassadors. So, uh, shout out to anyone listening there. Um, oh, absolutely. Anyone that's listening that already listens to the podcast, reach out to me or to energy pro on social media. Uh, but yeah, look, it's honestly, it's just beneficial to everyone. Like athletes, people have had even bariatric surgery. Um, you know, this is massive for them. They can't really consume solids in the early beginnings. And, you know, this particular product gives you, you know, the essential nutrients you need to sort of get mm. by over those first few weeks or even months. Um, you know, we've we've just launched a video actually with with one of our, um, I just actually put a video talking about his story and road to recovery there. So oh, wow. um, I'm happy to share that with with the um, listeners and yourself as well, mate. But uh, yeah, look, bodybuilders, you know, just everyday health benefits to it for everyone. Gym enthusiasts, you know, whoever needs just like a, either an extra boost of caffeine or a bit extra protein in their diet. Um, and they're also getting hydrated um, yep. and throwing any, you know, bad stuff into the body, so to speak, then, you know, cool. this for you. Well, absolutely. Given you guys have just jumped on board as the major sponsor of the Australasian Natural Bodybuilding Competition, 
you definitely yeah. want to hope there's nothing that's not HASTA approved in these drinks, given it's for natural bodybuilding. So um, talk to us about how you decide, what, why you decided to jump on board with, you know, that event, which is such a big uh, event but, as well. Look, well, we're massive advocates of that event. Um, you know, it's super important for us in the business to give back to the community as well. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're massive advocates for, uh, you know, supporting those who support us. Um, yeah. That's, that's what we're all about. Oh, absolutely tenfold. And because very similar on the podcast, we'll do ticket giveaways to games and all that sort of stuff because, you know, without those that support us, we don't have what we have, for lack of a better term. And yeah. de delving back into sport now, obviously, because yes. of life and sport, what is, first of all, your earliest sporting memory? My earliest sporting memory? Gee, that's a toughie. Um, apart from childhood mishmash, uh, mm -hmm. probably probably at the age of 14, uh, mm -hmm. you know, in football or for those listeners who call it soccer, uh, yep. winning the Gold Coast Cup. So um, I'm not sure about now, but, you know, 15 years ago when, when I played in it, uh, we, we won it. Um, I was fortunate enough to score the winning penalty. Um, really nice. Those, That's always what you want. Oh, 100%. And for those who are, you know, football players, um, scoring a winning penalty is... Uh, yeah, there's no better feeling, really. It's like that John Aloisi moment sort of thing. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, that's ripper. And obviously, um, did you realise you wanted to pursue football, you know, as far as you could possibly go? Oh, look, I was playing three different sports at the time. So I was playing uh, rugby union for school. Uh, yep. I was playing rugby league for club and soccer mm -hmm. for club. And basically... Jeez. Sort of once I got to the age of like 12, 13, I needed to make a, a decision. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not the biggest body going around. So so that sort of cut out union. Yeah, cut out union. Sort of cut out league. I mean, I was flipping between fullback, wing and 5'8". Yeah. Who knows what would have happened if I went down the league path because a lot of my mates in the same team ended up going on to play under 20s at the Broncos and things like yeah. that because I grew up in Brizzy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, chose soccer and... Uh, yeah, I guess the rest is history and yeah, just retired last year. Nice. And how's the, that actually transitions, no pun intended, perfectly into the next question, which is how was the transition for you from full-time sports to, you know, regular everyday nine to five life sort of thing? Yes, yes. And before I uh, answer that yeah, question, I'm going to plug my uh, computer in before it cuts out. That would be Yeah, No worries. I'll do a quick clap so I know when to edit this little bit out. Yep. All right. Yeah. And I'll, I'll restart the question three, yep. two, and obviously transitioning into look 12 to 18 months. I, I kind of stopped playing at a, a, a full time level, I guess, um, or at least at a semi professional level after I left Brisbane about six okay. years ago. Um, yep. I think the hardest part was transitioning from playing overseas at a professional level um, okay. back into, I guess, having to go to uni and, um, you know, do something a little bit normal. Um, yeah. I think you take a, a lot for granted and some things you can't control. In my situation, the club that I was at went into administration. So um, that was pretty pretty tough to take, but um, was fortunate enough to do well at uni. Uh, did, didn't know what I wanted to do, did exercise so science. I was going to say, so what, what did you end up studying at yeah, uni? I was yeah. like, oh, I kind of am decent at maths. I've got the sporting background, so let's throw together a bit of both. And uh, mm -hmm. look, here I am with a couple of beverage companies. Well, not just that, but one of them kind of is your wheelhouse, which is Energy Pro. It works in your, you know, your sporting background, your and also your, uh, you could say itch for finance and business sort of thing, all in one sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, absolutely. Because, like, which is kind of the perfect avenue for yourself. But um, did you find yourself struggling, for lack of a better term, in the transition after after uni, but not sure where to go next. Uh, you know, strong network and support of my family, first and yep. foremost. Um, but yeah, I guess looking back on it now, probably at the time it was tricky. Um, yep. but when you're doing something that you're genuinely passionate about and is incorporated into your everyday life, um, I think there's genuinely no better feeling than, you know, when you're working, but it doesn't actually feel like you're working. Yeah, no, that's fair. Very similar to for myself with the podcast. It, you literally feeling something I absolutely love and talking about stuff I absolutely love definitely doesn't feel like work at all. Um, so we've got some quick fire fun questions before we've got a few, um, you could say 
heavy sort of questions. I will not say heavy, heavy, but yeah. So quick fire questions. First one, Apple or Android? Definitely Apple. I have no idea how to use an Android. I and literally I had the, the I had the first guest the other day that I've had ever in the podcast say Android the other day. And I don't know anyone who has it. Uh, other than that bloke and, yeah, uh, that mate, and the house I'm at currently, I don't know anyone else who uses Android <laughs> and I don't know why you would. Um, next question. <laughs> What's your favourite movie of all time? Uh, cool Runnings. Great film. Cool Runnings. Great film. I think you might be the second at seven. Next question. Yeah. How do you like your steak? Medium rare. However, they never get it right. No, they don't get it right. Okay, medium rare. Do you prefer like on the rare side or like the medium side? Prefer it on the rare side, but it's yep. always on the more medium side. Yep. Or closer yep. to well even sometimes. Yeah, fair. Fair enough. Corn thongs for a while, but if you count Berkey's as thongs, oh, Berkey stocks, um, yeah. Okay, I reckon I'd classify them as kind of that in between sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, I got two pairs of Crocs and two pairs yep. of Berkey's, and okay, fair. I wear the Berkey's more. Crocs are more yep. for show. Yeah, fair, fair enough. The, the Crocs are the good going out shoes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the comfy good going out shoes that don't get wrecked. Absolutely, absolutely. So we've got three final questions. Um, first of all, what's ahead for Energy Pro for the rest of 2024? We did touch on the Australasian natural bodybuilding. What else yep. is, is ahead on, in the calendar for this year? Um, we're sponsoring a few sporting teams this year um, mm -hmm. at a semi-professional level. Uh, we do have a bit going on behind the scenes with some professional clubs as well, which is super exciting for us. Absolutely. Um, we're also involved with, with a number of um, professional athletes now. Mm -hmm. um, which is, you know, really, really exciting um, to see that the product is reaching those um, yep. who are after performance-driven product that's actually beneficial. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, apart from, you know, looking for ambassadors, um, you know, for the brand to, to come on in a, in a, I guess, a full-time capacity and maybe even more, it's just to essentially expand on our presence in gyms uh, where we're currently seeing um, in the petrol and convenience space, um, which... Yep which is growing, you know, day like by day. Like servos and stuff, you mean, sort of thing? Yep, yep, yep. Server stations, IGAs, anywhere where people can have a convenient, you know, option available. Um, Energy Pro, other than online, where can they find you guys? Do they just go to the website store locator? Uh, you can go on the website. We've got a number of packs um, available uh, to buy on the website. So www.energypro.com.au. That's E-N-R-G Pro. Yep, the link will be in the bio. Yep. And the description, etc. Um, then, as far as um, convenience goes, you, you're looking at the IGA space, a number of mm -hmm. health food shops that are around. So, if you've got a local okay. health food shop, um, oh yeah, ripper. Petrol stations wise, you're looking at, you know, there's a number of BPs on board, Metro Petroleum, Speedway, yep. Budget, um, you name it. Um, I think by the end of the year, we're pretty much going to be in most of them. So yeah, ripper. And if you're not, ask them to buy it in. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. If if you guys don't have anywhere nearby and you don't want to wait for shipping, definitely get into your local friendly grocer, which is technically a subsidiary of IGA or get to your IGA or even Foodworks sort of ones. Get into those local places or your local Anytime Fitness and ask them to please stock Energy Pro and they'll get in contact, obviously, with Trent and Energy Pro and get that, you know, that ball rolling. Um, my next question, obviously, you're a massive sports nut which is yeah, just right. what we are looking for, obviously, with the <laughs> podcast, of course. So you're being a sports fan of both the NRL and AFL. First of all, to the listeners, which teams do you follow in each of those sports? And secondly, which teams of those respective leagues do you think will finish in the top four? Uh, so AFL-wise, I'm a Port Adelaide fan. So mm -hmm. been bitterly disappointed for many, many years now. But Me I being a Collingwood say, fan is definitely gloating a lot, given the Collingwood Port rivalry. <laughs> uh, well, you wait till you hear my NRL side. Um, uh, yep. The uh, I I do think Port Adelaide will be in the top four this year if they don't. Realistically, I, it's a it's a it's a fail season if they don't. If I'm being honest as well, yeah. Yeah, yep, agreed. But look, demons, I think are going to be strong. Um, mm -hmm. But after last night, maybe I was not. Say after last um, night against the Swans. So we'll have to throw in the Swans then. Um, yep. I reckon maybe Carlton and Collingwood or Carlton and Brisbane as those other two, you reckon? Look, no disrespect. I've, I've left Collingwood out. Um, I think a couple of their players who have left last year are going to, you know, make a big dent 
uh, in there. I don't think Ginevan leaving is going to make a big dent, though. And Jack Crisp <laughs> leaving is going to make a big dent. And not Jack Crisp, sorry. Um, what was his name? So he kind of remember his name. Taylor Adams. Uh, was he even on the Adams? field last night? Yeah. Uh, I don't, is he injured? I don't think he was injured in the like in the grand like grand final weeks, but that yeah, that off season, if he hasn't recovered since then, surely he must be injured. So he's clearly not making an impact at his new club yet either. <laughs> yeah, look, I, yeah, we have gotta love to love to hate the Pies like most oh, people. I mean, that's like with Manly in the NRL. If you don't like him, you hate him. There's no in between. So I get yeah. it. We'll look, take. I it. think the Lions will win the flag this year. You see, look. If I'm being realistic, if Collingwood do not go back to back, it is the Lions flag. There's no ifs, buts, or coconuts about it. But you know what? Obviously, being a Collingwood fan, I'll do my top four bias and my top four non bias premiership. Then I'd probably pop in Brisbane, Carlton, and the Swans as the top four. Not necessarily in that order, but just those, you know, one through to four. Um, now, my non bias would be Collingwood out of the out of the top four, maybe finish fifth or sixth. Um, but in that top four, I would definitely put Carlton, Port, Brisbane Lions, and Swans. I that's I don't know in what order I would put Carlton them, but I could see them realistically finishing all in the top four if Collingwood don't make it in the top four. Yeah, it sucks for a few of those teams. Like injuries could be massive. Mm, yeah, unfortunately, that's what it um, with those teams. Yeah, all it takes is two to three injuries, and they're oh, cellar yeah. dwellers sort of thing. Game over. Yeah. Oh. So NRL, um, NRL, what team? Why? Oh, so who? Mighty isn't Panthers it Penrith? Fan. Mighty Panthers fan. Uh, now, to anyone who's listening, this is not the band. Pardon, pardon me. This is not the bandwagon three years in a row. This is dating back to like spoons for Dave. Pretty much when was it going back to, like, sporting career, like mm. my idol growing up was Ryan Girdler. Yeah. Okay. I've got something to tell you about him after we record. Yeah, yeah, of course. We, um, yeah, look, then I think growing up... Now, group, are, are we talking girls like 2000 to 2003 grand final sort of time or are we yeah, talking absolutely. like back in the 90s girls? I mean, you can't forget the Scotty Sattler tackle either. Oh, um, yeah. I think everyone remembers that pretty much like Dylan Edwards, except that was... Very after, similar. After half yeah. time against Parra. No offense <laughs> was, to Parra yeah. fans out there. You know, and all the offense to Parra fans, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> um, to my cousin who's listening. Yeah. Um, <laughs> No, nah, I think, uh, yeah, look, Petro Sivanaseva came across, you know, growing up in Brisbane, like, you know, obviously was fond of the Broncos in the in the early days, um, saw the Super League grand final in 97. Um, but, yeah, when, you know, I, my game when I was playing was very similar to, to Girdler. Um, obviously Fair. not the same quality, but... Yeah. Uh, but the style that he played, you know, kicking goals from from my, you know, football background. Um, and just, yeah, he was, uh, yeah, I think my mum was a bit of a fan because he's a bit of a good-looking rooster as well. So yeah, he, he definitely would have invited, like, you know, sexiest <laughs> man in the league back in the day for sure. Yeah, so I think it was spoken about a fair bit. But uh, do I think they're going to win it this year? Uh, look, I hope so. Genuinely, like, I know a lot of people are going to love this answer, but I don't think they're going to win this year. Um, look, I, we all said that last year, and look what happened. Yeah. Oh, you know, the they, ju they just keep turning up. Now, as a non-Panthers fan, and as a Broncos fan, losing to the Panthers last year, obviously, the way they did, hurt yeah, a bit. Probably. But you know what? We have the chance to possibly see history made. You know, four grand finals in a row. That hasn't been done since the 60s when the Dragons did it. You know, yeah. so if the Panthers do make that history, yeah. you know, but obviously realistically there's probably only two other teams that could do it that aren't the Panthers, whether it was against the Panthers in the grand final or not against Penrith. And I think that's the Broncos and Souths. Unfortunately yeah, well, this year. You rate yeah. Souths this year. I definitely rate Souths this year. Based on um even though they lost to Manly, but I rate their trials obviously and just how I don't know why just there's something about them. And whether or not it'll be Broncos, Panthers Rabbitohs, Panthers, or Broncos, Rabbitohs, for all I know. But those three will be up there, at least in the prelim finals this year, I think. Yeah, yeah. Well, I th look, I definitely think, even though Broncos got beat on the weekend, I think there was enough there to suggest that they're probably getting... Simply, they were really, really strong. Victor Radley looked unbelievable. Um, yeah, I think they've got a lot of depth. I mean, when you've got Tyrell May coming off the bench... Um, and Spencer Lanier coming out of suspension... <laughs> 
<laughs> Give them eight weeks. We'll see how long that goes. But you've got Jared Rea Hargreaves coming back. You've got Lindsay yeah. Collins. You've you got, got Connor Watson. You've got Brandon Smith. You've got, you've got the young star dude. after star yeah. after star. Oh, you've got Tupanua. Like, Angus Crichton's not even getting a look in. He was the best second rower in the comp a few years back. So Exactly. Um, yeah, they're, they're very strong. And I'm going to throw him manly, but on one condition <laughs> that yeah. Turbo stays healthy. Like, I reckon Turbo stays healthy and Brooks keeps that form that he found somewhere out of nowhere in that Vegas game. Yeah, yeah. Because okay. he's looking bloody good. He really is. Um, looking happy, looking healthy, looking not restrained at the tie like he was at the Tigers. Um, like he's not he's not feeling that pressure where they were trying to build a team around him almost every second year sort of thing that he yeah. was there. You could see the pressure lift off his shoulders when he scored that try and everyone got around him on the weekend. It was, yeah. it was pretty good to see, really, from a neutral. Yeah. It was great to see. Um, and so my final question for you is, what's next for Trent Bowler? Oh, look, this year is actually a pretty big year for me as well. Um, I have recently recovered from my Bucks party on the weekend <laughs> just born. So okay, yep. um, I'm getting married in April. Um, okay, congrats. My beautiful Beyonce Alicia. Um, hopefully she's listening. Uh, so yeah, to Alicia. Yeah, getting married uh, 20th of April up in Brizzy. Um, Very nice. Going on a small honeymoon after that because we just spent uh, five weeks over in America, which is an amazing experience game, unfortunately. But I did go to that stadium to watch an NFL match and it was unreal. Yeah, nice. That would have been ripper. Yeah. Um, then, look, we're probably going to look at getting a dog and having kids. So, yeah, this year is pretty all, all kinds of life, life admin and life things happening, which is incredible to hear. Well... Uh, on behalf of Life and Sport Podcast, of course, and myself, I want to, first of all, thank you very much for jumping on. Um, I'll get you one at the end of the season to see how our predictions pan out of oh, AFL and NRL. Because you never know, you know, we may end up being totally right or the complete opposite. Amber might um, be in last night. Yeah. You know what? After last night, I'm just so glad because, you know, I'm not meaning to brag, but I'm going to brag to everyone. Um, I'm now <laughs> first in every single one of my tipping comps that I'm in. Out of four tipping comps, I'm first in every single one. And there's multiple. One of them okay. has like 70 people and I'm first because I literally got the Raiders tip and I was four points off the margin in that game. I literally tipped Raiders by 12 <laughs> and everyone was tipping Knights 13 plus. Well, you definitely... Uh... Yeah, would have leaped ahead from that tip, that's for sure. Yeah, the only game I got wrong was the Broncos game. Um, but you know, that's neither here it's nor there. Going for them as well. Exactly. And also I'm as you know, I'm in your fantasy league. I'm currently first in the fantasy league as well at the moment. But that's uh, that's neither here nor there. That's just too a, excited yet, mate. It's a long season. As I said, it's only exactly it's only round one, but I'm definitely beating Micro Panasini. I hope you've captained Cleary tonight. No, I don't have Cleary on my side. Oh, okay. Yeah, no. I've only got a few more players left in to play this week. I've got Blake Tapp. And well, hope, hopefully they score well for you. Fingers not, crossed. Not really. 